I just don't think anything else compares. Like trying to propagate this in water would just not get you these kinds of just ridiculous, ridiculous roots, right? Alrighty. G'day you mob, how's it going? Welcome to this episode of Pete vs. Plants. I am Pete. And the plants are in the box here propagating away. Now, I think this is round three now. There'll be a whole playlist that I'll link up above of all the other aeroponic propagations and tests and stuff that we've done. But this, I believe, if I am not wrong, is round three. Now, there's been some interesting stuff going on in here. I've started using this to rescue propagations or plants that start going downhill, right? So, I don't think I have released the video yet, but I was filming a video on my mint monstera tissue culture and I got a message from someone, uh, well, my partner that I sold a, a propagate to, propagate, explant to, and he was like, Pete, the roots have all rotted off. So if you've seen this video, again, linked above, you will have seen that when it was delivered, the plants were sort of like in plastic bags. They'd already been taken out of tissue culture, out of the agar solution, and were just sitting in plastic bags in a bit of water. And it was a bit like, this looks a bit dodgy, like there's gonna be loads of microbes growing in here. Some of the roots were black on some of them. Anyway, long story short, uh, the two that I had, in fact, I had three that I held. I sold one to a friend that I got the Monstera Albo cuttings from. I sort of traded her. And she had one that was apparently fine and didn't have any issues. And then my partner, Sumac, he had one that the roots rotted off. Two of the three that I had, had the roots rot off, but new roots had started growing from sort of the base of where these roots were. And the third one, which is in here, had lost all of its roots. But I'm pretty sure I checked on it and it was doing amazingly. And also it's pushing out a new leaf. Out of the three that I have, it's the only one pushing out a new leaf. So I feel like the aeroponics system is good even for plants out of tissue culture. And the good thing is you just sort of set and forget. Now, the other bit of embarrassing information that I need to share is that I overwatered my philodendron patriciae's. So I had two of these, again, I'll put the video up above. I was very pumped to get these, but overwatered them and rotted the shit out of their roots. And uh, yeah, was sort of like, well, that was dumb, you know? They felt light, the soil mix wasn't mine, and it was denser than I usually use, so I overwatered them. Anyway, they are currently in here, or at least the survivors are in here. I think one of them has rotted away, but the other one seems to be still perky. You can see this leaf looks a bit dodgy. But yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, so this is the first time I'm really opening this up since chucking the mint in there, really. And I think I did a video where I would have put everything in here, right? And if I have, I'll link that above so that you can go and watch me propagating and chopping and everything like that. But as you can see, it all looks like it's doing pretty well. Like everything in here seems to be alive, except maybe one or, one or two leaves of the Patriciae's up here. We do have some leaves that have rotted off, but that quite often happens, even if the cutting is still doing well. And then we have loads of shoots from some of these plants that have been pushing out new growth. There's a tip cutting from a pink princess here that's doing pretty well too. So I think what we're gonna do is just pull these out and then we will pot them up. I actually spent the last half an hour cleaning some pond, so I might try some more of that. Um, where is Susan's potting mat? I need, I need that first. All right, thank you Susan. So I'm just gonna pull this guy out just so that it's not going directly on the table. And I guess, man, here's the moment of truth. So I'll get this out of the way for a sec. This is the bit that I love, the reveal, right? I haven't actually looked under the hood to see just how well or poorly the roots were going, but I have a feeling we're gonna see a lot of white spaghetti-like appendages hanging down below. So are you ready? Three, wait, what am I doing? Three, <laughs> two, one, ha! <laughs> yep, wow, she's worked a treat, guys. Whew! <laughs> Let's, I'll give you the front reveal. Okay, can you see under there? Wow, nice, nice work. So, it seems to be working really well. Looking at the mint one, maybe we do that one first. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep the mint in here or not. I probably should just let it keep doing its thing because it's obviously loving life. 
but I'll pull it out and give you guys a bit of a look first. Yeah, oof. So, just going to remove it. Had one leaf that obviously just rotted here. Oof, that's slimy. I need to clean all the algae off this stuff. But here is the mint out of tissue culture. So it was an explant. You can see the base there. All of the roots have rotted off, but it's sending out a load of new roots. Now, what I could do is just leave this in here and let it keep doing its thing. The other option is to put it back into moss and chuck it back into the propagation box now that it has a nice root. The only thing that I'm sort of thinking about with putting it back in here is that I kind of want to clean the entire thing because it ends up with a lot of algae building up because I do have nutrients in the water. So I might put this little dude in water um, just to sit there and stay hydrated for a little bit. And I'm just thinking, do I have a vessel? So for the meantime, just gonna leave him in the cup here. All right, so let's make some space and go through these guys and work out what to do with them. So I guess first we'll do the pink princesses. So these may need a little bit longer, to be honest. Like you can see that there is a bit of root development there and the shoot has come off or is coming out, is it? Yeah, yeah it is, yeah, look at that, nice. Under here, however, yeah, again, I wanna clean this thing so I might I might have to get a bunch of glasses to put water in so that I can just have these guys sitting there. Or maybe I even get a bowl. That might make life easier. Get a bowl with some water. All right, so I've just got a bowl here with some water and I'm just going to sort of place the cuttings in as we go through because I may end up chucking some of them back in here after we've had a little bit of a look. Cause yeah, some of these look like they need a bit longer. These pink princesses. It's gonna be interesting to see how these go. I wasn't sure how they would propagate, but they seem to be seem to have worked fine. Uh, the only thing that I'm kind of worried about with them is that they were very low variegation cuttings from the original one that I bought. This one's caught. How do I get you out? There we go. That looks like it's suffered a bit of rot, to be honest. There are some Roots that are doing okay, but one has been like degloved, so I'm not sure what the issue is there. But yeah, okay, seems to be okay besides that. Got another one here on the end. Yeah, okay, so not all of them have gone off. This one, again, has had a bit of rot from what looks like an initial root that it's sent out. And then it's sent out another root off the end of that one. So again, I'm gonna take this one out. They do feel so well hydrated, like they are, the cuttings are so chunky. This one's an interesting one too. Very limited kind of root development, but it's shooting out a uh, shoot. So these might actually require quite a bit of time in the propagation station compared to some of the other things that we've had in there like uh, Epipremnum and the Adansonii, which seem to just go off. Okay, so what have I got here? I think, I think this is one of the Patricias that I ended up saving. So I might just chuck that in with the mint. And I believe that this is, by the looks of it, a reverted Adansonii albo. You can see, I think, the variegation on the, where is it? On the tip of the uh, petiole here and on the uh, chunk at the base. And I think this one had sort of had everything rot off and just came back from that point. But it looks like it has fully reverted. So I guess we'll leave it in there and see how it goes with the next leaf, but it may have been a bit of a goner. All right, so this one, wow, Jesus. This one has gone off like a frog in a sock, guys. All right, let's see if I can get this out, wow. Look at the root growth. Adansonii just seem to go ballistic when you put them, when you root them full stop, right? When you chuck them into aeroponics or not. Now, I wonder if I can make a cutting here and create two plants. I probably can make a cutting, make a cut and create two cuttings instead of one. I might do that. Uh, do I have my, I might just use scissors because I'm a lazy boy. Although I will sanitize them. Okay, I 
think I'm just going to slice in the middle here. And it's a long internode too, so boom. So now we have two cuttings, each with huge roots. I might, are these, I think these are VAR and Sony eyes, so I don't think they're monkey mask from memory. Again, this is a problem when you don't keep track of things well. So I may pop these up separately in PON and I'll just check to see if we have any others. Actually, I'll chuck them into the water here. Loop them over the edge. Alright, do I have any others in here? No, I don't think I do. So, I might just pop them up now, seeing as we're already here. I'm just thinking, thinking, thinking about what to pop them up in vessel-wise. I might use... See, I have some of these plastic containers that I've sort of collected from around the place. But I'm not sure, some of them are a bit too tall and some of them are a bit too short. I think I found the perfect one. Oop, shit gun everywhere. I think this will be perfect for these guys. There we go. So I think that just came from Coles to be honest. I just keep an eye out when these guys are on half price. Because they sell them for like 3 or $4 when they're on half price. And I feel like, Especially after you guys have seen me smash a lot of glass vessels. The plastic ones are definitely safer when you've got small children and pets. So something like this, I think is gonna be perfect. I'm gonna grab the pond. Where's my little thing of pond? I've got a little spoon. Now, as, now, as a lot of you guys noticed, Pond in Australia is fucking expensive. It was like $120, right? And I've heard people over even in New Zealand can get it for $40, so three times less. I don't understand it. I thought, you know, it was a um, just a really expensive substrate, but apparently Australia is different from everywhere else. There is a different Australian-made version called MAD, I think. I'll have to look this up, and I think I'm going to try and get my hands on some and give that a whirl because if it's exactly the same it's like again it's about $40 for the same amount so it it would just be stupid to keep trying to buy this but as a result I've kind of cut it with really small perlite with fine perlite so I'm hoping hopefully you can see there's a bit of perlite in there that that makes it obviously go a little longer or a, a, it, it lasts a little longer goes a little further and I can use it to pot up more things Actually, what am I doing? I need this up here because I'm about to put some more in. So I guess we'll take the two cuttings that we have. I have sort of not cauterized them, but yeah, I'm just in a lazy mood today. So I guess we'll just see how they go. Cauterize them, you know what I mean, guys. Cover them with, um, with uh, man, I'm having a slow day. <laughs> Activated charcoal. So I am going to leave, I guess I'll leave the mid cutting a little higher, just so that the shoot when it comes out can reach through the substrate more easily. I have kind of twisted the roots around along the side of the pot so that I can see their health too. And I'm just going to spoon in the substrate. Now, you guys did mention in the previous video too that because Pond has its own slow release fertilizer in it, you don't have to worry about fertilizing and you sort of, some of you freaked out a little bit that I had used my uh, nutrient water. The good thing is I haven't noticed any burn whatsoever on the plants that I did that with. Uh, and I did flush them more recently, probably about, I don't know, a week ago and just leave water in there. But I was gonna just let you know that, yeah, they seem to have done fine despite having uh, my dilute nutrient water added to uh, the the pond. So it may be that the nutrient, the slow release nutrient and everything that they have in there is just really, really, really weak and dilute. Or that the plants can just handle a lot more nutrients than expected. Okay. So I'm just going to flatten out the surface here, try and find, there we go, the top of that mid cutting so that the shoot that comes out now that will grow out will be able to make it to the surface. 
you can see the roots are sort of along the side here and I'm gonna fill up the water to probably just below those roots, maybe just touching them. It is interesting, I rinsed this like three times and I still get sort of murky water. It does eventually kind of settle at the, bot at the bottom, but you'll have to let me know how anal you meant to be with rinsing these things because I've I spent so long doing it and I just don't want to waste that much water to keep rinsing, 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 rinsing. So yeah, you'll have to let me know. Are you meant to still be getting sort of murky water when you initially put some solution in there or is it meant to be crystal clear? All right, let's keep going. Some more pink princesses. So I've got the tip cutting here. That feels sort of lodged in. Yeah, this one as well. I'm sort of surprised that they've taken quite a while to root, although I know that this would have been way faster than if I had just had them sitting in water. That would have taken forever. All right, and the last pink princess cutting. Another one, good shoot growth. And three nice little roots that have come out as well. And man, this is... One slimy, sloppy plug, hence wanting to give them a bit of a rinse, give them a wash. Okay, so moving on to the next plants, I have a whole bunch of variegated heartleaf philodendron. So, oh, okay. These ones have been in there since the third run, right? So I think we would have put the, hmm, the mint was more recent, the patricia was more recent than that. And I think that the, the Monstera Siltabicana El Salvador's that are in here have actually been in here quite a while. I think they were from the second run, but we kept them going. Now, this is interesting. It's worked on a shoot and a tiny, tiny, tiny little root here, but it hasn't done much more. So it's gonna be interesting to see how the other Hartleaf philodendrons have gone. And we did put multiples in by the looks of it. Okay, similar story here. And I'm just gonna turn this around so I can reach the other ones. Okay, now here, oof, there's probably one floating around in there somewhere because I have a rotten petiole here. So I'll have to open it up and get in. Similar sort of story, these guys haven't gone too bonkers. They have done nicely, they have grown some roots, but I think they're gonna have to be in there for a little longer. Let's see if they are all experiencing that same story. I think there's actually gonna be quite a few floating around in here. Oof, okay, that one's not too bad. So that one's done pretty well. This one has rotted off. And see, yeah, it is another one of these stories, right? So I can see fungus growing or mold growing on that dead petiole and it is wedged right up against this other plant, but the other plant, the other cutting here is completely healthy. So I quite often sort of, I don't know, don't think that rot is that sort of in infective? What am I thinking of? I'm trying to think of a good, what's the adjective? <laughs> Contagious, Jesus Christ. Contagious, where just because it's sitting right next to another plant, it's gonna infect it, or just because it's sitting next to another root, it's going to cause that root to rot. I don't, I just haven't noticed that, to be honest. I mean, you guys will have to let me know what your experiences have been. Similar thing here, just a little shoot, some roots and a shoot, nice. They seem to have all popped at least. And you'll notice how all the shoots are white. It's because they're sitting below the plugs and they're getting zero daylight or zero, well, daylight, light from the light, right? Zero light from the LED light. We've got a whole bunch in here too. Oof. Ooh, here we go. This looks like a pretty promising one. So that one, is that one or two? I think it's a tip cutting. So that's interesting. It may be because it's a tip cutting that these roots do actually end up going way crazier. And they have really grown into this Oh man, I really don't want to break this. They've grown into the side of this uh, rubber plug. I really don't want to rip that off. Oof, nice, okay. Wow, look at that, tip cutting all the way. Same thing here with a little root and a little shoot. A little root and a little shoot. You have a little root and then you shoot. <laughs> all right, so I think I'm gonna lift this up and see if I can find uh, they didn't make it. <laughs> well, they may have. Let's see. There's a few that have fallen in here, so that might be something that you need to sort of keep an eye on because, yeah, they're obviously going to get no oxygen if they fall right in 
Yeah, so this one has rotted, although part of it feels okay. But the root's okay. Let's see. That's what it's ended up as. I think I'm just going to chuck that out, to be honest. Eh, we'll leave it in there for now. And the other one, gone. <clears throat> and this one, gone. So that may be the thing. If you see leaves rotting on the top, you may need to keep checking on them to make sure that the the stem hasn't separated from the petiole and fallen into the reservoir because, yeah, obviously if that happens, you have a limited amount of time before um, they just rot from being in the water. All right, so that is all of the variegated philodendron, the Hartley philodendron. Now let's get on to the Monstera adansonii, I think Laniata albo variegata. Wow, and this one... Oh my God. Do you reckon that one's ready to pot up, guys? <laughs> Whew. Now that is, that is what I'm talking about, right? That is looking good. And I guess a good sign that these roots have gone insane below is probably the amount of growth that has come out here. So I don't remember exactly how many leaves this tip cutting had when I put it in here, but I think it would have been it would have been up to this root. I can't imagine that this root has grown out of a node that then later appeared whilst it was propagating. So it's probably shot out one, two, and then a third leaf here. But just look at that. Isn't that ridiculous? Like aeroponics, man, this is where it's at in terms of propagation. I think it's probably been in there for about two months. I'll have to have a look and see when the last video uh, went up when we were putting these into the aeroponics system. But I just don't think anything else compares. Like trying to propagate this in water would just not get you these kinds of just ridiculous, ridiculous roots, right? Isn't that nuts? So I think he's gonna go into pond as well and we'll have a look at how the other ones have gone too. <laughs> I think from looking when we lifted up the pot, they had all done pretty well. This irritates me. This one's probably gonna go in the bin because, and here is a story of a half moon cutting. See the green on one side of that stem and the white on the other? It's probably a little hard to see, but you'll see here it was a half moon stem. The axillary bulb was on the white side and so it has ghosted, right? It has reverted white. I don't think we'd use reversion, but you know what I mean. So it's not gonna be pushing out any chlorophyll. So this thing would probably just keep going, going, going until it had reached the threshold where there's too much growth for the amount of chlorophyll that it has to be able to sustain that and then it would just collapse, I would imagine. So yeah, and keep an eye out for douchebags selling these online. If you see people selling plants like this and calling them albo, whatever they are, Monstera albo, you know, just don't buy it. Don't buy it, no matter what the price is. I've seen people do this and it's just, these won't survive, right? They won't survive, there's no chlorophyll. All right, so next one along. I think we've got another two or so. Oh man, you have to be so gentle pulling these out too because of the roots. Whew. This is a crazy one. This is like, look at that thick bush. <laughs> yeah, so that one's, um, that's a one hell of a root system. It's, look at that. Whew. What she doesn't have in length, she makes up for in bush. There you go. So, wow. It is interesting how they can just decide to do different things. Perhaps this one is now working on length and would catch up to the other one eventually. Don't know. All right, and the last one looks like it might be a twofer. Not sure. Let's lift it up and have a look. Oof, actually not as much growth, anywhere near as much as the others. But the, let me just pull this out. It's not a twofer, it's just a very kind of complex series of nodes that have all activated and the shoot there's a shoot coming out from the bottom and it's also a growth point so isn't that interesting in multiple shoots so there's a shoot here there's a really big one on the back here see and then we have this one up the top here so i might actually give this one a choppity chop one two Wonder how many I can get out of this. Probably a whole bunch, to be honest. Three. Oof, I think we're gonna do four. 
four cuts. So we got five cuttings there from that one. And I think what I will do with these at the end of the day now is chuck them back in after we've given it a clean because they will all keep going. This one might be able to be chucked in pond and I may chuck it in with these other two cuttings and we can just compare how they all go. Keep an eye on it, but these ones I'll definitely put back into the system. And that's what we talked about in one of the previous videos where if you chuck in plants that have multiple nodes, plants, cuttings that have multiple nodes, generally because of the humidity that happens in the, in the dome on the top here, all of the nodes both above and below the rubber plug here will activate and start shooting out roots. And in this case, you saw that th at least three of them had shot out growth points, or at least, no, there was two that had shot out growth points and one was the original growth point. So how crazy is that? All right, so last but not least, the Silda Pecana. Actually, no, we've got the Patricia 2 to check out, but this is the Silda Pecana. This one's been in there longer than the other ones, so I think this was still from round two. It hadn't done quite as much. So looking good. I think we'll probably chuck these guys in pond with I got another one and took it out a while back because it was doing really well and put it in pond too. So yeah, these are all doing very well. It's doing very, very well. Isn't that great? Far out, I just love it. And again, you could probably, you could probably cut this one up if you wanted. You could cut both of these up actually because they have multiple nodes and multiple nodes that have roots coming out of them. This is a Patricia leaf. That is not a good sign. And here is the last Silvicana El Salvador. So you'll notice compared to the standard Silvicanas, these ones have much larger leaves. And I think they're sort of a little grayer as well. I'm not sure, but I think that was what I've heard. They do kind of appear a little paler as a result of this. This is actually a form of variegation. It's air bubbles under the, uh, the surface of the leaf. And so it is a type of variegation. You'll see this in all sorts of things like syndapsis and, and monsteras as well, obviously. And uh, what else would they be in? Yeah, yeah, you'd probably see them in each one of the genera that have variegated plants, pretty much all of them, right? So yeah, I think I'm gonna do the same thing. We'll put these guys in with the other sort of so I'll probably have to take it out of the pond that it's in. And I do really need to give all of these a good clean probably sterilize them as well. And now the Patricia, and this is so embarrassing. I feel so bad. I can't believe I wasn't keeping a good enough eye on the roots, but yeah, this is all that remains of the Patricia that I had and they definitely look worse for wear. I'm just gonna have a look at the bottom here. So it does look like we only have one left. Hopefully we can bring this one back from the dead. It does. <laughs> It does look like it's surviving. Okay, all right, so those leaves, the leaf that I just looked at with, with dismay was actually from the previous one that I took out that was rotted and dead. But it does look like this one's gonna survive. And it is originally from tissue culture. So I'm just gonna sort of treat it like, treat it like that really and just give it a lot of humidity and um, leave it in here until the base here has started rooting better. I can see the formation of tiny, tiny, tiny sort of root nubs appearing, but yeah, man, what a, uh, what a rough ride, what a lesson I had to learn. Just keep an eye on your shiz nets, Pete, and don't let things rot. All right, so I'm gonna put this one in the water as well. I might take a break, guys, and I'm gonna give this thing a thorough clean out because, yeah, there's just loads and loads of algae and probably other nasties growing in here, and it looks like some Poor bastard with the world's worst cold has just sneezed some epic loogies into this dome. So yeah, again, <laughs> gonna have to give that a clean. And you'll have to let me know in the comments, should I keep this and just keep it growing? Why am I asking you that? Let's just do it. <laughs> by, the time, by the time you reply in the comments, I'll have decided and I'll either be growing it out or have thrown it in the trash. Let's just chuck it into some pond. And we'll just keep an eye on how it goes, I guess. And this can be our little experiment, guys. We'll see, does it, how long does it survive for? Is there any chance at all it's going to come back green? I doubt it, but I guess we just see how we go. God, I'm an idiot. Yeah, press A if you think I should keep this. Sorry guys, too late, threw it out. All right, so I can see the roots on the side here. I will put some water in here and I have a feeling that this guy is gonna be dead within a few weeks. 
Place your bets. Sweet. So there we go. Cheers. All right, I will be back. All righty, so I've given it a decent scrub. I've used some detergent to try and get rid of as much of the algae as possible, although I can still see that there is a little bit on the outside, but it's pretty much impossible to not have algae get into the system because it's just the spores of it are just floating around in the air. Anyway, we'll chuck some stuff back in there and we'll probably find some new things to propagate and chuck in there as well as we go. Here is my other Sildapicana El Salvador that I pulled out of this aeroponic system in one of the last videos. I did chuck it in pond and it is doing really, really well, shooting out roots. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually pull it out of here and just put them all back together into the same vessel with the same pond because I just don't want a million of these sitting around in different pots. It's, it's much better if they're all in the same area. And I kind of just want to have a bush growing out of here that I can keep taking propagations from. So that's why I don't have any problem having, I don't know, four or five cuttings growing out of the same vessel. So I'm gonna need a container. So I'm not sure sort of how gentle or not you need to be pulling these guys out of pond. Like if moving that pond around can damage the roots a great deal, but I guess we're about to find out. Oof. Okay. Feels like it's kind of... Oof. There we go. Alright, so I think this guy's only been in here for about, I don't know, two weeks or so. But it's good to see the roots all the way up to here are still all alive and you can see that new growth, that white two or three inches worth on the end there with the nice hairs. Interestingly, it's kind of different from the rest of the, from the rest of the root here, but perhaps that's because it's been grown out of aeroponics and in, into water, I think it was. So yeah, okay, so there's this one. Now I'm just gonna try and lie him, her down gently, gather my other cuttings kind of put them together and this is another one where I can mm, actually no I can't I was thinking maybe I take a maybe I take a knife to it and chop it up into multiples again but all of the decent roots seem to be coming out of a single node I think that's all of them so that's what it looks like so one I'm just going to try and sort of have these at the same level in terms of the where the roots are coming out or sitting, just so that, yeah, I don't have a whole bunch too high up or too low down. I want them all at about the same, the same height. And I guess the lecker is kind of now mixed up in the pond, so it probably doesn't matter too much. I might just give this another rinse just for the sake of it and then um, chuck it back into here. So the funny thing about that was that I was thinking, how am I gonna separate the lecker out from the pond? The thing that I forgot about lecker is that it floats readily, or at least most of the balls float. And so when I added water and gave this a bit of a rinse, all of the lecker just came to the surface. So, oh, you know what works well. The lecker balls float, the pond doesn't float. So I'm gonna be able to separate the lecker back out. How good is that? <laughs> there you go, too easy. Now, I just need a little spoon. <clears throat> and we will chuck these guys down into the system here. The system. Uh, try and keep them all at about the same level. And make sure that the roots are all visible, sort of pushed up against the side. And then I guess we just have to gently spoon the, the, I was about to say lecker, but the pond and the lecker back into the vessel. All right, so I think we're done, guys. Looks pretty good. I think it's gonna be nice to have, uh, I don't know if it was four or if it was five, growth points coming out of this little pot. And yeah, pond seems to be a really, really good substrate. Again, now I'm just gonna chuck water in up to probably the base of where that lecker is. And it should just go off like a frog in a sock. And uh, yeah, we'll be able to take more cuttings from it. 
and hopefully I'll be able to sell you guys some via the website once the website is made if you are indeed after some Silta Picana and you are in Australia, especially the El Salvador one. This is the one that you can chuck on a pole and it gets massive. And I forgot to mention the standard one is this one behind me. And this trails like a beast, to be honest. It's about two meters long. I've got it all the way up on top of, let's see if I can let you see, on top of my bookshelf here and it's probably gonna reach the floor in no time. So yeah, I guess we'll see how that goes. But I'm gonna clean up here and then we'll do some more potting up, I guess. Uh, might do the same thing again with Lekka. So, just create a little reservoir in here. And again, I'm mainly doing this just to make sure that the pond goes a little, a little further. The Lekka is a lot cheaper than pond here in Australia. So, got to remember to chuck some water in that Silvicana one. Okay. Now, what I am thinking again is taking more cuttings. And I guess we'll see how this goes. Do I do it? Do I not do it? Hmm. See, I could, I could take multiples. Hmm. I just, the only issue I have with this, and you guys will have to let me know what you think, when you have roots that are so long like this with other cuttings that have very short roots and you want to put them into the same vessel, is it somewhat sort of difficult to be able to manage that because the ones with the short roots are inevitably going to end up higher up and further away from the liquid and therefore have a harder time surviving, whereas the ones with longer roots do a better one? Should you pot them up separately in a smaller vessel? Maybe I do that with these ones. In fact, I think these two should be fine. Yeah, I think these two should be fine, but this one I can probably put in a smaller vessel. Something like this might be perfect. So maybe we start with that one and just do 100% pond. All right, I guess we'll see what happens. This will be an interesting one to watch. Worst case scenario, if you're worried about it, just chuck it back into the aeroponic system. Uh, the only thing that I would watch with the smaller ones is potentially them being out of 100% humidity now, right? They were inside that dome for a long time. And so if they're very small plants, they may dry out really quickly. Whereas the larger cuttings, when they are something like these guys, they tend to be fine, just taking them straight out of 100% and putting them in, say, what, what is it currently? 60% in this room but smaller ones may suffer. So again, that, that may be something that happens with this guy where he'll just shrivel up and cark it straight away. Um, all right, so sieve out of the way, strainer, sieve. And I might just put a little layer above the lecker to begin with. Boom and sink these guys in. Look at those roots, it's just magnificent, huh? Just love it. And what I'm gonna do, because this is a growth, a growth point, right? Like it's a growth point, it is the growing tip. I can sink this down further than the other, like relative to the other one potentially, if I'm worried about those roots getting down low enough. So I'm just gonna make sure that it does have at least some roots right at the bottom there, touching the the bottom of the vessel, or the bottom of the, um, the lecker there, the pond, just so that it hopefully can reach the reservoir easily. Yeah, so that's the best thing I think with having growth points or growth, growth, <laughs> what the hell am I thinking, man? Jesus Christ, the tip cuttings, right? The tip cuttings where the growth point is right at the top, they tend to do really well. You can put them in deeper and get those roots closer to the reservoir. And I'm having a really slow day, guys, I'm sorry. I had a chest infection for the last week and it's just been brutal. <clears throat> Which is why you'll be hearing me clearing my throat constantly. I'll do my best to edit those out, but if you catch a few, that's why. And I hate that. You feel fine after a week or so, except for the fact that, at least for me, my lungs just feel like they don't have the capacity that they did. And I am constantly feeling like I need a cough to clear something out, but there's, it's, it's like nothing is coming up. I don't know, hopefully you guys know what I mean. Okay, so that is Monstera adansonii, Valaniata, and um, Albo Variegata.
So I need to just get a little label. Boom. All right, so there's that one done. Now, do we have any others that can be potted up or does everything else need to go back into the machine? I'm kind of curious with the, the pink princess, how much to just pot them up and see what they do with such rudimentary roots. I don't know if they would take or not inside the pond. And I, I'm not as phased about these guys surviving. I just kind of wanted to see how they would go. So I might just do that and see what happens, to be honest. Hmm. What do you guys think? I know it's definitely probably jumping the gun, but well, definitely with that one. But I'm not as phased, to be honest. The other option that I could do that might be interesting I could chuck these all in a Ziploc bag with moss. That might be a cool one worth trying and just seeing what happens. Hmm, perhaps we do that. Yeah, so, whoop, almost ate it. So this is gonna be interesting. This is a way that I really enjoy propagating things now where you just chuck moss in a bag, keep it moist, and you can just leave it sitting there under a grow light for ages. And eventually the roots will start growing underneath the plastic and you can see them. And yeah, it's just a very easy way to sort of set and forget. You don't have to do much watering of the moss until the plants really start taking off in terms of growth because the moisture is just locked in there. So I'm sort of curious to see what would happen if I chuck all these guys into a Ziploc bag here. I don't know how the easiest way of doing this is. I think it's probably just putting these guys in first and then just feeding the moss in. And I might see if I can get all the leaves to kind of face the same direction so that I can lie, lie it down and they will all do okay. This is gonna be fun to see what happens. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see, I've kind of just put them all in the bag. You could do them individually if, you, if it was something that was really important and that you wanted to um, make sure had the best chance of success. I'm just kind of keen to see if this, the idea that I have in my head works or if everything dies. And again, so I'm using these pink princess cuttings because they were ones that I was not too keen on keeping. They had very, 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 very bad low variegation. And it's one of those things where if they just had none, I'd probably like them more because I actually do like the Arubicens that are just dark, that have that burgundy, that burgundy look with no pink variegation whatsoever. Things like the Dark Lord, and I think, I don't know if there's a Dark Queen. There's a whole bunch of these ones that are sort of all the same, the same idea, right? They're just these dark ones. But when there's sort of one leaf every now and then that has a little bit of pink like this, I don't know, it's just not as cool, in my mind at least. So this will be interesting to see how it goes. I just have to make sure it is pretty moist in there. I can add in more moisture later. I can see some of the roots sort of poking around the edges here. So again, that's good. You can just keep an eye on these pink roots. And the good thing is these contrast really well with the moss, so you'll be able to see them easily. And you just wanna make sure that it's not, the, the moss isn't overly moist, but that you can see condensation on the inside here and make sure that moisture's within the bag so that, yeah, the roots can grow easily. Um, and I'm just trying to think of how to sort of close the bag. <laughs> Because that's the other thing too, you need to sort of make sure that the bag is sufficiently closed so that the moisture stays on the inside and doesn't come out. So I'm just going to staple that and I wonder if I can do the other side as well. They're going to end up sort of locked all into a bunch like a little bouquet. Bouquet? Bouquet? Maybe I do some staples between a few of them and lock them in. I think that's about as good as we're gonna get it. Yeah, <laughs> so that's gonna be interesting. I'll probably chuck it on a shelf like this where all those leaves get light from one of the grow lights. In fact, I'm gonna go and do that now and I might show you later on where it is. It's also the cool thing about propagating things you're less sort of attached to and not as worried about the success of, you can kind of see how your little experiments and ideas work. So like with the Pink Princess, I was like, oh, I could just throw this away or I could sell it for nothing or give it away. 
But then I was like, you know what, maybe I just propagate it and try and sort of use this as a lesson to learn from this. Um, all right, so there's also this one, this Monstera that has reverted and literally has zero white on it. I think I'm just gonna turf this one. Oh, there's a little bit coming up the side here. So that could be, there's a little bit of variegation on the side here, which could be a sign that the next leaf to come out, which will be on this side, will be variegated. So I guess we will chuck him back into the machine and just let him do his thing. So in you go, buddy. Into the center, there we go. Boom, and back in you go. And now we have a whole bunch of these laniata cuttings that I took, that I chopped up. I think we had five of them, right? One, two, three. Is that another one? No, that's philodendron. In here somewhere. Four, is there a fifth one? Or did we end up potting that up? Hmm. Can't see. Maybe it was one of the larger ones that we actually potted up. I think it might have been. This one? Yeah, I think we may have potted up the other one. Okay, so we have four of them. So, and remember what we can do, we can bunch these up together so that they're not taking up a heap of space. So you can just sort of chuck one, two, even three together. But yeah, I'm not sure, do I do that? Maybe I just give these guys a bit of space so that they have a better chance of not being sort of crowded out by things around them and doing really well. All right. The only thing that I have to worry about with some of these mid cuttings too is the sprout being able to make it above the little plug here. So I have to sort of keep an eye on these, I think. The roots will go bananas, but I don't want the sprout to kind of be in there for too long, kind of facing down. You can see here this, this tip that's sprouted. What I can do is kind of let the tip face upwards through the hole. I don't know if you can see it in there. He is inside that hole in the middle there. There you go, sort of poking upwards. So hopefully as it grows, it'll make it up and get to photosynthesize and go north. All right, I might chuck some of these, if not all of these uh, philodendron, variegated philodendrons back in. Same sort of deal. A bunch of these have growth points and I kind of want to make sure that the growth point can get up and out that makes sense. So here, you can probably see that little white claw. I want to make sure that he can make his way up and out and get to the light. Up and at them. Up and at them. Man, I haven't watched The Simpsons in like a decade, probably longer. Isn't that the, I've forgotten the name of his um, character, the one that was like a piss take of Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was always getting effed over <laughs> when he was uh, asked to do shows, right? Getting, getting injured on the set and everything. This, this Austrian actor who was an action film actor in The Simpsons. So again, wrapping the shoot up into the plug here and making sure the roots are below the plug just so that the shoot will be able to grow up and through. See, white claw poking through. And we'll see how these guys go. Fingers crossed they all do well. Oof. That one's probably okay to pot up. I wonder, if, do I have any other really advanced ones? There's probably a couple here that I could pot up and just see how they go. Yeah, so that tip cutting, and that one has some decent roots, that one has some decent roots. Are there any others that have semi-okay roots? Maybe we'll try that one as well and just see what happens. Again, just learning. Don't be afraid to sort of trial and error these things, guys, and see what, what you get success with and, and what you don't get success with. It's how you learn. And it's sort of, what I decided to do early on in the plant, indoor plant hobby was just go nuts with propagating all sorts of plants and trying all sorts of different methods so that I was effectively giving myself that experience that you know I could rely on others for when I came across a plant that I wanted to propagate in a certain way, you know, one of those more important plants. But instead, I just tended to go to nurseries and stock up on cheap plants, um, you know, common cheap plants that 
I could replace if they died, uh, that I wasn't really too worried about killing, worst case scenario. And um, yeah, I learned a whole bunch about what works and what doesn't with propagation. Killed a lot of stuff in the meantime, to be honest though. Is there something on my foot? Jesus, cat's putting it, playing with this bloody toy under there. Oi! <laughs> it's a funny thing, she's sort of like hanging around, but you guys have no idea because she's underneath the table. All right, the Patricia, hopefully we can keep this guy alive and get, get it bouncing back. Um, what am I gonna pot you up in? We'll give you the green. So again, I'm just gonna make sure, I could probably pull this leaf up. I think this leaf's probably a goner, so I'm just gonna rip it off and give it a decent amount of that sort of stalk there and put that below. Is that a growth point or is that I think it's just a stalk from a leaf. I'm just gonna leave it on there anyway though. So I want that base where the roots are gonna come out of below the rubber and I kinda of want all these leaves to be sitting up above and not touching anything because I think that too is how the, the rot can sort of reach the leaves. I find that they're often touching the, the bottom although maybe they rot and they fall down and that's the result of it. Um, what can we chuck these guys in? I think a short stubby cup like this might do well. So I'm gonna chuck some pre-rinsed pre -rinsed lecker in here. We also have this thing, and I've totally forgotten what this is. It looks variegated. I think it is one of the, yeah, it's one of the Hartley philodendron. <laughs> so this is gonna be interesting, interesting one to try and get to work. I've gotta find, try and work out where the growth point's gonna come out. I guess I will just try and stick it in like this and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully something happens. Let's see if we can bring him back from the brink. Okay, so I've got these ones in front that I wanna pot up. Hopefully, again, I want some other plants from these guys that I can keep taking cuttings from and then chuck on the shop. So this is obviously as well, guys, how I'm planning to do this as a small business using the aeroponics system to propagate things quickly and then create like a little bush of plants that I can pot up and then take more cuttings from, chuck them through the aeroponics system and then use those as my uh, plants that I wanna sell, right? So hopefully that makes, makes sense. All right, how am I gonna do this? It's a bit awkward, but ugh, can you just hold them, hold the bunch? I'm not sure is this guy too, what would you say, stout? Low, stout, fingers crossed. We can do okay in this one. Again, learning, learning guys, learning, learning, learning. So if we have a crap time of it, we've got a whole bunch of these cuttings still in the aeroponic system. I just move this humidity dome. <laughs> and worst case scenario, you can always just buy another one, right? If it's if they're available, the prices are all coming down now anyway. Maybe the best thing to do, hold them over the side here, seeing as I'm spilling everything everywhere. How does the pond go, guys, with just allowing shoots to grow out of it? Like, I imagine it's not the, I don't know, densest thing in the world. Like, it is a bit heavy if it's pure pond, but do the shoots tend to be able to sort of grow out of it pretty easily, do you find? Guess we'll see how we go. So there is that one as well. Give this one a label as well. <clears throat> okay, and before I forget, I think we have two plants in here that we also have to chuck into the machine, so. The Mint Monstera, I'll chuck back in. There we go. And I think this is the other Patricia, so I guess we'll see how this little nugget goes. This was like an offshoot from one of the other plants, so there were like two plants planted together. This often happens in tissue culture. So I thought I would save this one. You can see the base is there, it's looking healthy. So hopefully it survives as well. I'm just gonna clean up a bit and then we'll see if I can find something else to propagate and chuck in here. I 
I think we might try some variegated bell marks, which I have here. Uh, this will be interesting to see how it goes. I haven't propagated this before. And I have just noticed fucking spider mites. God damn it. All right, maybe not. Maybe I will give this one a pest treatment. And it's a tough one. When I say spider mites, it's often just the web. So I'm not sure if there are actually spider mites or if this web has been there for a long time. And when I let the predatory mites just go through the collection, they have just wiped out the spider mites and left the, the web there. But I tend to just, as soon as I see the web, give it another spritz and, and leave it isolated for a week or so. Okay. So this one is a Monstera obliqua Amazonas. And I've had this for quite a while and it's shooting out another runner. So I think what I'm gonna do is see if we can propagate the runner, see what happens with that. Cause it does shoot out tiny little roots here. I'm not sure if you can see that. And I might also, I did sort of bend the runner back around and it did end up rooting into the back here of the moss. So what I might do is chop the runner in half here and just take some cuttings off it. What have we got here? Let's see where we are. Have you rooted in? Yep. So I'll take this one as well. And this one here. And just see what happens, I guess. This will be interesting. So this is a runner. There's a, it's a leafless node, but there should be a growth point underneath the sheath here. And I'm wondering if I put it like that underneath, how is it gonna go in the clone station? Well, that's gonna be interesting. All right, so, and I'll do the same thing for this one. I'll do it for that one too. So I'm just gonna take a bunch of these cuttings just sort of getting rid of the excess uh, internodal spacing. Looks like a node there too from the runner. If you're worried, you can probably just chuck them into a prop box and they should be fine in there. But this thing seems to grow like wildfire. So yeah, it will be interesting to see how we go. So I may just leave these out for five minutes 10 minutes and let them kind of callus over a little bit and then chuck them into the clone station. But I would love to get one of these on a pole and see how it goes. They do fenestrate eventually. I don't think I have any leaves that fenestrated yet. <clears throat> no, nah, not yet. Okay, so find the way that is up. I'm wedging the, the root at the node just below into the where the mist is going to be because that's where all the root growth is going to come out. Same thing here. I can probably just sink this guy all the way below. And then with the runners, I guess I'm just going to try and remember which way is up and do the same thing like this. I'm not sure how they're going to go, to be honest, but should be okay as long as the humidity stays high and they're getting moisture and uh, nutrients. I imagine they're just going to shoot out roots and hopefully because they're gonna be pointing upwards as opposed to horizontally, they will start shooting out growth instead of more running, more running nodes, right? And I've just realized I've run out of slots. So I am going to double up with these ones. Okay, so apologies. I do realize that a lot of that was happening off camera. But I'll try and show you now how everything is situated. So here we are, we've got the next round. I guess this is round, I don't know if it's three or four. Jeez, I've lost count. But yeah, I think it's all gonna do pretty well, pretty well. I'm really keen to see the Monstera Mint and the Patricias survive. And yeah, I guess I'll keep you guys updated. Thank you for joining me. Check this video out next and I'll see you next time.